NASA has teams of people that operate spacecraft in deep space. We um, are awarding prizes for fastest burst data rate, largest data volume downlinked in a 28-day window. That whole maker, and manufacturing, miniaturization, commoditization, reduction of cost has really enabled kind of this citizen science and engineering. And what it, what it gives us is a more diverse set of participants contributing to NASA and the NASA mission. Citizen spacecraft builders literally race to the moon in NASA's Cube Quest Challenge. Well, here we go. NASA's in the business of giving small-time scientists and engineers opportunities in small business grants, open data invites, and other efforts are meant to empower the high school kid or hobbyist who could be the next Werner von Braun. But in a Cube Quest challenge, for the first time ever, NASA is enabling amateur spacecraft builders to participate in a mission to deep space. And here was one of the craziest ones that I had to find. But anyways, there are two main challenges, okay? The Lunar Derby and the Deep Space Derby. In the first, craft must achieve a stable lunar orbit and establish communications with the Earth. In the second, craft must demonstrate data transmissions from 4 million kilometers, about 2.5 million miles out. That's more than 10 times the distance to the Moon. Okay, we're told that the Moon is 240,000 miles away this hobbyist competition to send CubeSats out must go out to 2.5 million miles. Who are they trying to kid? And who do they even think that will even actually substantiate these claims? Yep, it worked. It's there. It's there. Yep, telemetry data says so. Yep, we got it all. Yep, mm-hmm. Everything's all good. Oh, wait a minute, we lost it. Yeah, we lost all the data. No, that's what happened with the moon. They lost everything, all the data right because they didn't go to the moon it'd be so easy to show all of it but no what do they say they destroyed it or they lost it or they don't even know where it is yeah we're not sure what we did with that data it was 12,000 reels of data uh but it went missing so we're not sure what to do there so so yeah we're led to believe that they're going to give this to hobbyists and as a little competition nasa's having oh can you build us a nice space a sat cube to, to send out into deep space 2.5 million miles and oh you can communicate with the earth and who are they trying to kid who believes this stuff seriously feel sorry for these kids feel sorry for these teams working on it oh i hope i win I hope i'm the first one ever to go to deep space nasa said that that i'm out there right now it's actually at 1.9 million miles i'm close to my target of 2.5 but how would they ever know nasa told me so really all of this is nonsense, nonsense, more nonsense, and we need to roll. We need to roll the clip, because this is just crazy. I've had it with this stuff. It's just getting more and more crazy as the days go on. Let's roll it. What used to be done with a satellite the size of a school bus, you can now get into a tiny little package the size of a CubeSat, which is, uh, you know, like a Kleenex box in size. In the CubeQuest Challenge, we're challenging our competitors to take their CubeSat into deep space where no CubeSat has gone before. And that means there's all kinds of new challenges that they've got to solve. They've got to be able to do navigation without GPS, without the Earth's magnetic field. To get into a lunar orbit, you know, there's no compass, there's no, uh, you can't just uh, use a GPS. Almost has to be autonomous. And so um, our developers are having to do subsystems that are going to work in ways that the CubeSats to date haven't. That's why you see the emerging technologies coming out of the CubeQuest Challenge. There's a couple of teams that have really unique propulsion technologies. One is uh, an electric propulsion technology, an ion propulsion technology, where the fuel is uh, solid iodine. We've never done that before. So with electric propulsion, you get really good gas mileage. So for a little bit of fuel, you can go a long way, or we call delta V, change in velocity. Um, all, another team has uh, water-based propulsion technology, electrolyzing the water to separate it into hydrogen and oxygen, and then use that as the propellant. And that is also incredibly innovative and novel. 
Once they are launched and deployed into deep space, then um, the operations parts begin. And that's not to be overlooked, uh, the complexity of that. NASA has teams of people that operate spacecraft in deep space. We um, are awarding prizes for fastest burst data rate, largest data volume downlinked in a 28-day window. That whole maker, and manufacturing, miniaturization, commoditization, reduction of cost has really enabled kind of this citizen science and engineering. And what it, what it gives us is a more diverse set of participants contributing to NASA and the NASA mission, and a whole new set of innovative ideas that come through those diverse sets of participants.